Kia Welcome back to the Rebecca Ann Knits Knitting Podcast. I'm Bex and I'll be sharing all my knitting with you today. I'm back a little bit sooner than I was for the last little while. Today is actually my birthday and I really wanted to film a podcast as part of my day. So I'm here to show you all of my whips because I have had some crazy whip cast on energy. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's get into it, shall we? Um, you will remember from my last podcast that I had heaps of FOs because it had been ages since I'd recorded. Um, and yes, this one is now very light on the FOs and much heavier on the whips. So my only FO for this episode, which I don't have here with me, because I nearly forgot complain about them, was the um, fingerless mitts that I mentioned I was going to cast on and knit for my daughters. So I will put a picture in here of those. Um, I, uh, my youngest daughter, who's six, has some rainbowy ones and some fluffy coral ones for my, I'll peach really, I guess, for my seven-year-old. Um, no, she's not seven, she's eight, she's nearly nine. Um, Kara, she chose those. Um, that's just some fluffy acrylic that I got from Lincraft um, that she really likes and likes the softness of. So I knit them up, I just kind of freestyled her ones and I followed the school run mitts by Laura Penrose for Rhea's ones. Um, yeah, I've cracked right into it without even talking about what I'm wearing. <laughs> you can tell I'm a little bit frazzled. Where it's the end of the day, it's what time is that? 4 30, so we're starting to lose the light. Um, so this might be a bit of a shorter episode as I try and crank through before I lose all the light. Um, which is also why I haven't uncovered all my stash today as well, just to kind of keep it a little bit lighter and brighter. Um, I am wearing one of the lentos that I made last year. This one. I don't remember which month I made it, but it's knit up in hedgehog fibers, can be singles, in the colorway Monet. And it was held with a, um, just like a natural undyed mohair um, throughout. And then the bands and cuffs and bottom band is also in, what was it in? It was a Malabarigo, don't remember what the uh, base is called, but it was 50% silk, 50% merino, and a DK weight. So. I have no idea what the colorway was either. But I had that in stash and left over from another project and I thought it turned in nicely. Um, so that's what I'm wearing. That's my only FO. Hopefully I'll put a picture up if I manage to get one of those. Um, and all the crazy whip energy. I am drinking some tea today out of my beautiful little cup. I gifted myself this for my birthday. Isn't that cute? have something pink and pretty <laughs> and you never know what people are going to give you so you can always give yourself at least one thing I reckon definitely um I will endeavor not to knock the microphone today sorry about that last episode um I felt like the audio was better but I kept knocking the microphone so I would definitely try not to do that today um what should we talk about first last episode I talking about my lauder I've been working on that so I'll show that to you first this is my only garment real whip at the moment I have made some good progress not masses because like I said I've had the crazy cast on energy um, and all the new things have been coming along but I have joined in the round so I have finished the fronts and the back you see the v-neck taken shape there now I love it isn't it beautiful how she's designed that cable just to frame the v-neck all the way and then the raglan shaping the shoulder shaping I should say has this cable traveling all the way down as well it's so pretty so really well thought out this design so I'm in the round now just doing a million zillion rows for the body um it's really intuitive this cable it's just like a four row repeat and so you just cable every fourth row you're only ever crossing over two stitches so I can easily do that without a cable needle um, so yeah, it's quite easy. Just tick away at that. It's almost TV knitting. I do have to look at it. I can't look away because of the cabling and making sure that you stay in the sequence of knits and pearls. Um, but there's only ever one pearl in between each of the cables, which for me works out good because I feel like my tension is terrible when you have several pearls in between. But for this, it's working out well. So I'm working on that slowly. Hasn't had a heap of attention in the last week once I got it joined in the round. I was um, excited to move on to all the other things. <laughs> I made those gloves for my daughters. And then I 
Um, sorry, I've got notes here. I'm a little bit scrambled because it's been a crazy kind of different day <laughs> being my birthday. Um, I mentioned about wanting to make socks for my dad. Um, so I've been working on those. I have one finished, no ends wo woven in, but finished. Um, so this is the sock tube that I had um, that I bought, bought on a D stash. So I've no idea what that is, but I have just added the cuff here. I decided to knit it top down because my rib and cast on is much better than my cast off is. So I did the painful thing of knitting the rib top down and then I kitchened it all the way around onto the sock tube and then I've put in the afterthought heel and just a simple wedge toe. Obviously haven't sewn in any of the ends. Um, I'm not 100% sure what size my dad's feet are. I hope he doesn't see this. I'm sure he doesn't watch these, but I'm gonna give them to him on Wednesday anyway. Um, even though his birthday's not for a couple of weeks, I'll be seeing him on Wednesday. Initially, I made the foot the length that I found on a chart online for a size 10 men's, which I thought was a pretty safe bet. I tried it on my husband, who's a size 11, and it was too big. So um, I did some more Kitchener, and I took out, I put my needles in just below the toe here, and took out 10 rounds, and then put the toe back on, because I didn't want to re-knit the whole thing, which is what I could have done, or re-knit the whole heel, and move the position, but I decided just to take the rounds out. That's one of those done. I am hoping to get the other one done before I see him on Wednesday so we'll see if that works out I'm going to Auckland on Wednesday so um, if I get it done I shall give them to him then and if not I shall post them to him when they are done um, yeah so that's my dad's socks that's been working out well I'm just using some leftovers of the KFI sock yarn that I used for a pair of socks earlier in the year um because that was the the grey that I had that toned in the best and I think that actually looks pretty seamless, pretty good and my kitchen skills are growing because I've been doing so much. Um, so I've been working on that in between. To be honest, they're quite a boring project. I'm not inspired by the colours and I'm not very excited by them but I want to make them so I'm just squeezing them in when I've got some convenient knitting time like I did the heel at church on Sunday because I did um what else have I been working on I mentioned that I wanted to make some um, fingerless gloves did I mention this? I'm not sure if I mentioned this anyway the midwife that I am working with currently for on my placement is over the Kapiti coast and I noticed in the first couple of days that I worked with her we had some pretty chilly mornings and she really liked like she noticed her wearing fingerless gloves and I'm like ah wonderful perfect gift for her for the end of her placement um as you know, I made a, a beanie or a hat for the midwife I worked with in my first placement. And so I was like, I want to make something for this midwife too. I'm only with her for five weeks, so it doesn't, <laughs> it's not going to be a brioche hat that it takes me 10 attempts to get correct. So I am making her some fingerless gloves. I have the first one finished. Um, I think they have turned out really nice. I noticed she wears a lot of beige and natural colors. So I used this, which was some. Um, leftovers from my stash this is the yarn I use for my Harriet cardigan so this is a Polworth yak blend um, that's undyed there we go and it has this lovely lace motif on the hand oh do you like my pink birthday nails <laughs> of course I had to have pink glittery nails on my birthday um yeah so I actually I followed a pattern this is a free pattern that's on Ravelry I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head so I'll pop that on the screen um it tells you to do another whole pattern repeat in the in the wrist and also another whole pattern repeat um on the hand but um I know that this midwife wears the same size surgical gloves as me and so her hands are similar size to mine and I felt like this was more than enough and that if you have it longer on your hands and it gets in the way of you, the use of your fingers and if you have it too long on your wrist it actually gets really annoying when you're wearing a full sleeve um, that's my feeling anyway so I've modified it to be two, two repeats or 20 rows shorter um, yeah I'm really happy with that haven't blocked it yet so I'm expecting it to um, open up a little bit more as well 
um, and so maybe I will get more like this sort of length once the lace opens up. But yeah, really quick knit. I really enjoyed this. It was really simple. Um, nothing complicated about it. Just a 10 row repeat on the lace, which by the end of the scrub I had pretty much memorized. So yeah, I feel like it went really well. Um, and just one more to do before in the next four weeks. So that's pretty achievable. Um, and I think she'll like them because they're something that she wears already. So, and it hasn't been too much time we've gone into it. But I really want to be appreciative for the time that these midwives take to train students because it is a lot of extra effort and um, kind of critique as well because someone else is watching and learning from what you do. Um, so I do appreciate them. So I've been working on that. Um, what else is on my whip list? I also cast on another toaster tank <laughs> um like i mentioned before i'm going to auckland on wednesday and i wanted a nice easy in the round project that i could take on the plane and for my travel time in the airport um i could take some socks um i could take i uh, probably wouldn't take the other glove because i have been needing to follow the chart for that a little bit i probably don't want to take my lauder just because it's quite involved um and quite bulky it's getting quite big and I just am taking a day bag, no luggage, so I just want something I can pop in my handbag and have with me. Anyway, I felt like that gave me the excuse to cast on a new, um, did I say Lauder? You know, not new toaster tank. That's what I'm making. I don't know what I said. Sorry, guys. It's a toaster tank. I've dropped a stitch. One second. Um, I was doing a little bit of stash sorting, and I stumbled across two balls of this Rowan felted tweed, which I grabbed on a D stash, and I had initially tried to start knitting a tank top with this um, from a different pattern, and I got all the way through a whole ball and then realized it was way too big. So it needed to be frogged, and I just chucked it in a corner and moved on. Um, but I picked it back up because I really liked I really liked this color. It's really pretty, and I really like the Rowan felted tweed. And I felt like I might just have enough, maybe just. <laughs> so I'm doing the DK weight version again. Um, here is the cake I'm working from, which is one that was sort of yarn. That's got a yarn needle in there. Um, frogged from my other. Really, I was procrastinating on working on an assignment, and I sat there and frogged and caked up <laughs> the project that I had. And I'm actually holding it with this mohair, which I had in stash, which is just a skeins trial line mohair. Um, which I was like, ah, oh, I feel like, how much meter edge do I have with this? 175 meters per ball, and I have two balls, but I lost a little bit in the frogging process. So I had maybe 45 grams of this one and 50 grams of this one. And I was like, oh, that's going to be a bit tight on meter edge. Because I'd quite like to have it a little bit longer in the torso, this one. So that since this is a real woolly warm combo, that I can, um, wear it as like a singlet top as a layering piece in the winter because it's not really tank top weather in the middle of June in New Zealand so anyway so I cast it on and I decided to hold it with this mohair just so that I could get a bit more meterage out of it it could go a bit further um, I did a tiny little swatch and was like yeah I really like this fabric so this is what I have literally just a cast on because I'm saving it for the plane um, and look at that fabric isn't that nice? It, it takes a tiny bit of the teal away. It makes it a little bit more blue toned. But I'm all good with that. You know me. I'm a blue girl. And as much as I'm a pink girl, I'm a blue girl. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's really feeling lovely. Um, I'm getting gauge. And I am knitting on. What am I knitting with? A four and a half. And a five. No, I'm knitting with five, which is the recommended needles for this. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong spot. Um, <laughs> which is the recommended needles for this pattern is a five millimeter. Um, and with this yarn combo, I feel like that's making a really nice fabric. It's not a super dense fabric. Um, you can see some light through it, but it will be really warm. And that's what I'm going for. So that's my travel project for Wednesday. Um, and I'm keeping that, of course. And my brand new project bag with the piwaka waka on it um because you've got to color code your projects when you can so i'm loving that it's so beautiful and um really beautiful fabric and just so easy you just go round and round and round i'll just knit as much of the body as i can 
um, I'm intending to knit that whole ball um, of felted tweed and just see what the length is like then. Um, I know I took notes with my previous DK weight one, so I should be able to work out how much I need. I'm undecided yet which neckline I will do. It'll depend on the yarn that I have, I think. Um, I know that. Obviously, the camisole version uses the least amount of yarn because you've got a v-neck, so you're not filling in all this area. Um, but if I'm wanting something warm for layering in the winter, I kind of would more prefer to do the best, or like standard tank top version. Um, but we'll see how the yardage goes. So, yeah, I'm working away on that. I feel like the light is going. I think it's okay on screen, but um, it's getting dimmer in this room. <laughs> this will be a quick episode I think but it's fun to have a little bit of a birthday update um anyway what else to talk about oh I mentioned last episode that I'd had my May yarns from um Dreamfire Yarn Co did I even mention that I don't know if I remember to um Dreamfire Artesian Yarn and anyway I think I said oh, I've got to mention them and then I forgot to come back to it so I thought I'd show you these I have mentioned in the past that I requested that they give me pinks this month and look at this fade i mean they're blowing out quite a bit but i mean they are very pink I'm not sure i've got them in the right order i think it's like that beautiful wee pink fade isn't that lovely and look at this little touch Texas pinks isn't that cool oh i'm so stoked with that um these are beautiful 25 grams each, 100% merino. So these will be going straight into my stash of pink yarns for my um, advent blanket making in December. So woohoo, excited by that. Those are beautiful. I just got the notification today that my June yarns will be packed up and sent to me tomorrow. So I'm excited to see what they send for June. Um, hopefully more pink. <laughs> um, we'll see we'll see i'm looking forward to it um what else have i been doing i went to wellington is that all my whips no i have one other whip but i'll talk about that in a moment that's all the main whips i haven't really worked on my blanket um because i've had that cast on energy and started all these new things um i picked yarn for my june socks so i'm gonna finish that one with my dad's I'm not really counting them as my june socks because they're not a full sock they're just a sock tube so um for my June socks, I decided to do some scrappy socks again because it's been a little while since I did a scrappy pair. Oh, all my ends have unwound. Oh, sorry, hold on. I've got a few little like 10 gram balls here of all of Mama Willing sock yarns, which I am going to pair up. These four colours, oh gosh, there's two teals and a pink and a gold. They are really hard to hold. Okay, there we go. I'm going to use those four colours and do stripey, scrappy socks for June. Um, I have slightly more of the pink. I definitely have 20 grams of that one. I think it's only 10 of the gold. But I'll do some kind of stripey, scrappy combination. I may have to find a little bit another colour to go into, but we'll work with that. Usually I can get away with about 40 grams for a pair of socks. Um, if I just do my standard little shorties. So that's put together for my June socks. Um, I've lost my train of thought. I'm doing real well. Sorry about the wet hair. I was having a wine in the spa <laughs> before this. Um, let's see. Oh, I went to Wellington, of course. Um, on Saturday, I went to Wellington, which is a little indie dyer, small business run um, pop up, wool market kind of thing. Um, they have them a couple of two or three times a year in Lower Hut, which is 20 minutes from me. So, um, yeah, that was really nice. It was, I wouldn't know if I would get along or not, just depending on because I'm on call this weekend. Um, but I didn't get, someone was in labour, but they didn't need us until later in the afternoon. So I managed to sneak along, which was great. Really nice just to um, pop along. It was really small. There was only six vendors. It was just in like a community hall. And, um, but yeah, I had some birthday money to spend um, because it's my birthday today. So I got given it a little bit early and I took that along and I 
got some lovely so I'll show those to you now um so there was yeah there were several different shops I've got a little video clip um just a little scan of the room that I took when I first got there which I can pop in for you um so there was yarn therapy and um they were there and also dark harbour yarn were there um holland rogue yarns was there who else something else i can't remember who they were um i hadn't i hadn't brought from them before or anything there was newton house um yeah so lots of different lot, uh, yeah six different vendors i think and i picked up um holland road yarns is um but there they had lots of different stock and so the first thing i picked up was some jameson's and smith which i've heard a lot about in different podcasts from the uk and so that was quite intriguing they come in these 25 gram balls this is um two ply jumper weight um 100 real shetland wool so that's quite cool eh um just something you don't see all the time in new zealand these are 25 grams 115 meters and um Tend to be knit on a three or a three point five. Really great for color work. It's quite a toothy, woolly wool. I picked up these to put into my Christmas Advent pink blanket stash. I thought those would be really beautiful. Um, I'm going with, as you know, pinks and peaches. So these toned in really well. So I picked up those. Then she was selling some stuff that some yarns that were pre-loved. Um, so I got I picked up a couple of bargains from her pre-loved stash. Um, this is niched. I don't know niched. I don't actually know how you're supposed to say that, but I got two of these. Oh gosh, throwing things around in this beautiful tonal blue. These were fifteen dollars each, and this is a hundred percent merino. It's a five ply sport weight. And you get 266 meters for 100 grams and this is called la plage la plage um yeah and it's a new zealand um it's yeah it's a stitchy yarns yeah so it's a new zealand hand dryer for my breast. i hadn't heard of her before um but these are beautiful so i thought i would make maybe like an anchor's tea anchor summer tea or something like that with these so i have two I feel like it would knit out as a DK. Like it feels like it's quite generous in terms of its, like in terms of meterage, you would normally get like 200 meters for 100 grams in a DK. And this is 266, so it is a bit lighter, but it's quite plump. I reckon I would be able to stretch that up to a DK almost. But even if I knit something that's written for sport weight, that will make a lovely t shirt type garment i picked up this one as well which is natural star i was trying to not just buy pink and teal <laughs> uh, so i have blue and green which not really much different um i guess this is kind of a tealy green anyway um it's called natural star 100 percent merino four ply 472 meters so it's quite a light one and it's called light evergreen um but yeah isn't that pretty so i thought that could easily make me a toaster tank um another nice warm layering piece some kind of cami to wear in the spring and fall and under under sweaters like this in the winter um yeah so i picked up that one i picked up those two this one was only 20 dollars as well so this was a real bargain and then because I think these were nine dollars each, so they were a little bit pricey for twenty-five grams. Um, but they were beautiful colours. See how tonal they are? They're, they're not just a solid, which is really nice. And so I was happy to pay. And the other thing I splashed out on was this bright, bright, bright pink. Okay, that is blowing out a little bit. It's more like this. It's quite pink. It's quite similar to my cuffs, maybe a little bit brighter. Um, this is by Dark Harbour Yarns. And um, this is a 70% mohair, 30% silk. And this is called Very Pink. <laughs> and um, 420 meters. And I'm going to make a, what's it called? 
I had it on the tip of my tongue. Ghost Whisperer, which is a pattern um, that I can't remember the designer's name right now. I'll pop it on the screen or in the show notes, um, which just uses for my size one skein of mohair. So it's a very loose gauge. It's completely sheer kind of top that you wear kind of over a tank. Um, but I couldn't resist some bright pinkness for my birthday. So that's what I'm going to do with that. Um, so I had a great time at Wellington. It was just, yeah, it was a very chill vibe. Very different from Capital Fiber Fest. Much more low key. Not so many crowded. No, not yeah, nowhere near as crowded. Um, they were open from ten till two, and so it was quite. The I think ten till three actually, and so it was quite just a chill vibe. Um, they had lots of space to sit in that, um, and I took along my Piwaka Waka bag, which I also picked up in. And the springs when I went a couple of weeks ago. But this is just a heavyweight tote bag and yeah, loving this. It's so pretty. Um so I yeah, had a great time at Wellington. Um my friend Helen was hoping to come down from fielding to go with me, but she was unwell. So and in the end I ended up at a berth from about 1 30 through till midnight. So I wasn't very available the rest of the day. <laughs> so um yeah, that was really nice, and it was really nice to get to go and squish some yarn in person. I primarily buy all my yarn online, so I don't get many opportunities to go and actually squish in person. I find I have real decision fatigue <laughs> in person. I just, like, can't do it. Can't make up my mind when I'm there looking at everything. Um, there were some other really beautiful yarns, um, like some Biche Bouche, and... Um, there was, yeah, there were some cool other brands that I hadn't seen recently or not seen in person um, from retailers in, retailers in New Zealand. So that was quite cool. It was cool to squish them all and um, take my time choosing, <laughs> um, which I definitely did. And, and then I enjoyed a little bit of nifty time as well. So um, the other thing that I have cast on that I was mentioning just before is um, I did a birthday cast on today. I showed you this yarn um, last episode. This is the beautiful Mama Willing skein that my friend Helen gifted me for my birthday. It's a little bit, it's totally blowing out. You can't see the colors, but not doing it justice at all. But it's kind of like this, almost like oil slick rainbow. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is on Mama Willing's Luster Base, which is a single ply with 30% silk and 70% merino. Um, and this colorway is called Knitworthy. Helen brought me this um, as a birthday gift from Capital Fiber Fest, and I have cast on just the tiniest amount so far. This is going to be just a single skein shawl. Um, I'll pop the photo in of what it is, what the pattern is I'm following. It's really simple. You just it's a free pattern. You just increase every fourth row on one side at the moment, so it becomes an asymmetrical triangle. You increase out to about eighty four stitches or something, and then you start decreasing. And then it has a cool little trim border thing and I'm going to use this which is a similar content but it is well, it's merino and silk um different brand obviously but another single ply and I'm going to use this as the contrast edge um yeah so that's going to be beautiful so that's my birthday cast on so potentially potentially the toaster tank might get trumped for the plane trip and this might come instead or the most might both come <laughs> if I have enough room um, because that is just absolutely stunning and it's just a delight you know um, single play yarns don't always make the best garment yarns because they're not quite as robust without the twist um, and I did consider making a tulsa tank or a camisole with this but I felt like because you're going to knit flat in some areas and knit around in others that the you wouldn't get I don't know I just feel like the the way that this would knit up would be kind of weird. I um, mean, you'd get different patterning in like the cup areas or the flat areas than you would in, in the round. So I decided that a shawl length would be the way to go. Um, and it's cooler now. So this way I will get to be able to wrap it around my neck and stay warm with it. And it's just so pretty. It's just so pretty and so soft and so luxe. Um, the pattern calls for four millimeter needles, but I'm using um, one 3.75 or one 3.5 just to get a slightly tighter gauge because it was feeling too loose when I did the very first cast on with the four. Um, yeah, just so it's got a little bit of structure to it. 
but it is written for a single ply um, silk content yarn so it should turn out really beautiful this pattern so I'm loving working on that as well I am hoping to get some more time on this this evening um as yeah I've got a quiet night in for the rest of my birthday I am technically on call so a baby might turn up and decide to share its birthday with me um but you never know no word yet still waiting to see I did have a glass of wine in the spa with my husband earlier in the day, which was absolutely lovely. I've been on a lovely big long um, hike in the na na native bush um, just out from us. I did the Kaitoki Ridge Track, um, which was lovely. It's kind of my favorite go-to walk. You kind of have to be dropped off and picked up because, well, you can go back and forth, but it's three hours each way, which is just a little bit too much to fit into most days. <laughs> um, so I just did the one way and my and drop me off at one end and pick me up at the other which was really enjoyable so so rejuvenating for the mind and the soul just to be alone in nature and doing a bit of exercise as well um, I find it quite hard to fit the old exercise in with this midwife lifestyle um, so yeah take the opportunities that I get that was lovely um, my husband and my oldest daughter Ellen made me eggs benedict for breakfast which I love my favorite meal always a special occasion meal for us um so i had that i had lovely cake ella baked me we have yeah we've had wine in the spa we played some party games my girls insisted on um getting a pinata and filling it with lollies for us to uh, <laughs> for us to play which was really fun um not what i would choose but really really fun to celebrate with them um, they brought me some beautiful new pajamas as my gift, and I brought myself the teapot. <laughs> um, and I also brought that yarn, of course, um, on Saturday. So I've had been very spoiled with lots of lovely things. I'm just gonna sip my tea. Going cold already. You can tell it's winter. Um, what else have I done today? Yeah, played party games at the spa. Been on a walk, had a delicious breakfast, had lots of lovely greetings from lots of lovely people. Um, so it's been a great day. I've really enjoyed it. Um, it's, yeah, it's nice. Sometimes I feel like as an adult, you really get to celebrate your birthday and other times it kind of just gets brushed along as not much different to any other day. Um, and it could have looked very different for me if a baby had decided to turn up overnight and I needed to sleep all day today or if a baby turned up today um and i needed to go then i would have that's just the way way it is but um i probably should have been working on assignments but they can wait um because <laughs> i'm not doing that on day if i don't have to <laughs> um but yeah it's been really really nice and um i'm looking forward to a quiet night in as well um with hopefully lots more knitting to come um what else do i want to share with you today i think that's pretty much it except for i did want to do a birthday giveaway um it's i love receiving gifts and i love giving gifts gifts is definitely one of my love languages and so i would love to share a gift with one of you um to say thank you very much for watching and to celebrate my birthday so i tossed and turned about many different skeins that are in my stash because I didn't want to go out and buy something purposely. I wanted to gift something that I had originally chosen for myself, but I'm now going to gift to you. And I decided that it would be only fitting for me to give away something by Mama Willing because she is my all-time favorite hand dyer. And I figured the most fitting thing to give away would be something pink. So I am going to gift this beautiful um, skein by Mama Willing. This is her plush fingering, and this is a freestyle one-of-a-kind pink colorway. Um, this, her plush fingering is 15% nylon and 85% extra fine merino, 400 meters to 100 grams. So it's a sock yarn, but I've made many garments with this um, base. It is beautifully soft. It is really robust in socks, um, but it is also absolutely beautiful for garments or shawls or accessories. There you go. Beautiful variegated pink. So if you would like to be in to win, this beautiful skein and some other little extras that i will pop in along with it um please just comment below let me know what you're working on at the moment what's on your needles 
and um, I will pop you all in the draw to to win this little prize and um yeah and then I'll send it out to you I'll pick a winner on my next podcast and then I will um which hopefully will just be in a week or two and then I will send it on out um open to anyone international or I don't know if I've got anyone watching from overseas but if you're overseas feel free to enter as well um or anyone in New Zealand and I will pop it in the post to you um yeah with along with a few other little goodies so as a thank you from you to me um and to celebrate my birthday so yay isn't that fun I've been thinking about doing a giveaway for a little while and I was like oh do I want to do that is it just a bit cringy but I was like nah let's go with it it's my birthday and if nobody wants to win it then that's fine I'm quite happy to keep it <laughs> all good um but if you'd like to be in to win just pop a comment below um, I'd love it if you would like and subscribe as well. That really helps my channel get out there a little bit more. Um, I've had quite a few more people watch my most recent episode than I have on the previous ones. So thank you very much. Um, feel free to spread the word and like and subscribe if you would like to. Um, absolutely no pressure. But if you do subscribe, then you get notified when I make new videos. And um, liking the video just really helps it get out there within the um, YouTube algorithm so and making comments as well so feel free to ask any questions um, and to comment on what you are making so I can pop you in the drawer for that skein of yarn and a few little goodies. I think that is all I've got to say today we are losing the light rapidly <laughs> I can see I look completely different on my screen than I did earlier um, so I will leave it there for today thank you for joining me hopefully I'll get this up and edited and um, you'll be able to enjoy it soon happy birthday also to King Charles it's his we celebrate um, his birthday this weekend in New Zealand as well so thank you very much for the public holiday on my birthday I appreciate it <laughs> it's always nice to um, get a day off and it's always around my birthday not always exactly on the third but today is a public holiday and it is my birthday so happy birthday king charles even though it's not actually your birthday today and yeah blessings and happy knitting to all of you i hope um this finds you well and that you can enjoy some knitty time sometime soon um that you have something lovely on your needles and that you have some something to celebrate as well and some some joy whether that be with summer knitting or winter knitting whether you're settling in or heading out um yeah i just hope this finds you well so i'll see you again soon i hope not promising any fo's but you know there will definitely be whips <laughs> take care everyone bye bye